The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. Don't forget, this is the last day of the sale, that special Tiger sale. Wow, what a deal to get, 20, 30, 40%. Uh, bonus. So here we go. The Dow, check the front page of TFNN. This is your time to do it. Dow's up 38 at 25,623. This is going to be uh, an important session because it's going to tell me whether there's enough strength to form the lowercase h in the Chapman Wave Method. Oh, let me just show you this right here. Uh, yep, there it is. So what we're looking for in the core patterns of the Chapman Wave, we look for the um, most obvious lowest low. We try to count the number of peaks above. The fourth highest peak, alpha, beta, ties, uh, uppercase D, that fourth highest peak is where other things can happen. Certainly, you can go to E, F, and G. Most importantly, these are the patterns we're looking for. You've got the straight line up and down. You've got the cup, and you've got the arch, the arch and the cup right there. Or you can get a combination. And this combination here of the lowercase h, if it holds the left side low, it can make yet another one. And I call that lowercase h to a lowercase m. So what we're looking at here in real life is this pattern right here where there's a large arch formation, and then there's another little arch. Now, this has got the, the pattern that could look like head and shoulders, but I don't think that's the case right now. More importantly, 25,772 is the 14th, the black line, the thick black line, the 14 period exponential moving average that needs to be pierced. Then the next level of resistance is 25,000. 957, let's just go step by step. Uh, we're, we're really seeing a mixed market here where um, the semi is up 0.09 um, in the semiconductor smash from the 120 level, goes down to the 97 uh, trading right now at 99.50. Really very poor action. And, and there are a number of areas that should be important. What is moving right now, let me just do this before I forget. Look at wheat. Wheat is up 14 and a quarter. At 503 uh, and three quarters. That is a spec 418 to 509. Whoa, what a move. And look at this. Even soybeans, which was lagging, is up nicely today, up 24 and a half at 854 and a quarter in leg B in the Chapman Wave in the daily chart. Leg B, no, it's only a leg A in the weekly because you cannot count the bar that makes the high as an A unless it's a Chapman Wave instant restart, which it isn't. So this is only a leg A in the weekly chart. And look at corn. Corn is up. Oh, what a move. 343 round number low on the 13th. And now it's two weeks later, maybe a little more than two weeks later. And you're at 416 and a half. That's the reason why for subscribers, we do have um, an agricultural fund. and uh, We're long been wrong for a little while. And uh, we had some losses initially when we took it as it was just plummeting. Now it's made it all back. It's looking very good. What a move. Look at this weekly chart. Look at the monthly chart. This is not even a leg A yet because you have to make a, a higher low bar before you can actually get a trough. And only after the trough is made, you start counting the legs to the upside. Yes, the weekly chart is in a spectacular leg A. Two weekly gaps? I've never seen this. Um, no, I shouldn't say I've never seen it. I just don't recall ever seeing it, whether it's a, a commodity or whether it's a stock. Two gaps on, on, on the first day of trading the next week? I'm sure it's happened. I just don't remember it. But this is spectacular. Look at it. It's just wiped out all the trading, down trading since July when it was at 416, 415. Amazing. Corn. Okay. Let's get on with our nitty gritties. Um, I just let me just do this for a moment because it's going to give you a good sense, at least for what I'm looking at, if that's what you're interested in. I'm looking at the weekly chart saying that everything about it, and this is what I said to subscribers over the weekend. Remember, I, I send charts out every day of the week, um, do a lot of work. I, did, I, I certainly went through a ton of charts over the weekend, but I didn't send out as many as usual because. I needed it for my own. I wanted to glean as much knowledge and information as I could. Look at this. The weekly chart 
has everything about it. The MACD cross negative stochastics gone from the 96% area to 48%. Everything about this says that I should be putting a down arrow for at least a sell signal in the weekly chart, but I can't because you can't get a sell signal when it's only at a peak C. You can only get it from a D or higher, fourth highest peak, not the third. So I'm watching this real closely. Why? Because on a weekly basis, the technicals are suggesting that even if there is a turnaround to the upside, it's going to have to either be spectacular or it's just going to be a bounce. And then you're going to have to do some more retesting. So a consolidation, basically. If it takes out 25,222 any time this week, that's very negative. That's very negative. Monthly charts, we've got another week to go before we talk end of the week. Another four or five days to go. Four days, actually. So let's just, we'll wait before we talk about the monthly chart. As it stands, I don't see any chance of it going above 26,695, unless it's just an unbelievably spectacular bunch of news. And that could happen, but I don't see the reason why it should. So um, in the meantime, back at the ranch, what we are looking at is just let me say that the E-mini, uh, let's look at the S&P E-mini right now. See this potential cup formation? It's really a bowl formation. It's having tremendous resistance. This magnet of the 200 period exponential moving average in the two minute chart says that the level of, let me click on it so I can see, uh, the level of 20, 28, 29, 28, 30, it's like a magnet. It goes slightly above it, then it comes back and goes under it. So that's both resistance and it'll be a support level if the S&P E-mini can break above 28.41.25. That was the high right there. Oops, that's not the high. That was the high earlier today. That was early this morning. I didn't finish notating. This is A, B, C, D. And let me just do that right now. Um, I was actually trading the, um, the Russell future. So let me just do this. A, B, C1 is actually C2. All right, that's like a PD, and now we've come back. So 28.41.25, that's, that's, that's another 10 points up. It can happen. So I'm just going to say that a close at between 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock above 28.42 would suggest that we have a very nice rally into maybe Wednesday, maybe even Thursday morning. If not, you just back to the same old, same old of rally failures. Okay. Enough with that. I wanted to show you, look, high-grade copper. Oops, wrong thing. I should go high-grade copper to the daily and weekly monthly charts. Here we go. High-grade copper, HG. Look, high-grade copper is trading right now. It's down a little bit. It's at 2.696. It's trying its first real decent opportunity now to trade up, and it still can't do it. Look, the MACD is finally crossing positive after being very weak. Stochastic's finally bouncing from the from the, from the was that, I think it was single digits, actually. Uh, that's 14, 20. Oops, I can't get it right now. There it is. Okay. I've got it. The stochastic was, in fact, down to 15% level. So now it's at 23. It should be a much better rally. It's really struggling. That's a problem. I'll be back. Dow's are Chapman. Tiger conditions are Dow's at 31. S&P's at 5.31. Slightly better than the Dow. I'll be right back after these important messages at 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page scanner under the services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, we're looking at wood, which is the ISHA's Global Timber and Forestry ETF. Everyone, we're looking at copper, which is very weak. Now wood, which is global, uh, copper, global. Wood, which is the ISHA's, um, I mean, this is international. Timber and Forestry ETF, terrible. 83.88 June of 2018, trading at 56.20 right now. 55.06 was the low back in uh, December. This is just not good action. This makes me a little worried. And if I put this together with um, my, which is Syntas, which is Syntas, is the, uh, Syntas is corporate, uh, corporation overalls, uniform rentals, holding very nicely towards the all-time high. Amazon, that's the A part of cash, kind of near the all-time highs at 1844 since 2050.50 was the September all-time high. But very weak lately, making that H pattern, the dreaded H pattern, tested the 1817.25 low, closed below it. Now it's trying to rally. It has to climb over 1860 to get over the 40 period moving average, 40 period in the uh, daily, uh, and PD in the weekly. So it's really taking a bit of a breather. Uh, SPY, which is the S&P right here, SPY, which is making the H pattern, the same H pattern that we looked at in Amazon a moment ago. Look at this. There's your arch, lowercase h. Now I'm putting it on this side to see if it's going to uh, pull back further. But right now, unless the SPY trading at 283.15, up 37 cents, S&P depository receipts, that's the S&P uh, 500 uh, trading vehicle, can close above 285.60, really nicely above the 14 period exponential moving areas, a thick black line there. That's a problem. But the MACD is close to wanting to turn up, and the stochastic is making a W formation. This is the opportunity that it has. If it can't do it, that's a real problem because that peak C in the weekly chart, like the Dow, has this one didn't close negative. The SP, so the Dow weekly chart, MACD did close Friday week underneath, uh, cross negative. This hasn't. So, uh, so that's. Spy, and now we've got Home Depot. Home Depot is up 30 cents at 193.89. Uh, it's holding quite nicely. Uh, I showed it to my subscribers this morning, uh, over the weekend, actually, and this morning to say, hey, it's trying to turn up here. Look, the MACD is just about to try to cross positive. It's still 0.11 minus 0.11, still negative, but it's trying. On balance volume is good. MACD, uh, stochastic is up. 
The weekly chart hasn't deflected lower yet, but because we've got a full four days to go, it better not, otherwise it's a real problem. But this is going to be important because I'll tell you right now, unless Home Depot, which had a high today of 196.47, can close above 197.65, that was the high of about five weeks ago, um, that's a problem. If it can do that, that's really bullish. If it fails and starts to go under 192 in the next two days, well, that's going to be a real failure. That'll be a big negative. Um, now we've got, so that's my cash index. When I look at my Dow Quartet, that is Caterpillar. Caterpillar, which is surely it's up. No, it's down again, down 56 cents at 122.34. Look at that monthly chart. Look at those H's. One H right there fails. He has another H failure. Wow, Caterpillar. Mm, 122.32 down 58 cents. Uh, so that's Caterpillar, IBM. Surely it's up a little bit. No, it's down 12 cents at 132.16. Another look at the series of H's. Remember, they keep failing, and this is what IBM is doing. Uh, Triple M, which had a horrible, horrible chart pattern, down 52 cents again today. Look at that weekly. The weekly goes from 220 down to 165. I mean, wow, that is huge. And not only that, but the monthly chart had an all-time high of 259.77 January of last year. Now it's trading at 165, 100 points down. That's not good. And UTX, United Technologies, also down 29 cents at 131.10. I don't know why the Dow can't get any traction today. Um, hey, these are not good charts. These are really lousy charts. So, okay, we'll watch that closely. Now, as we look at FANG, uh, Facebook, Facebook is up three at 184. It's right on the 200 period. Sorry, it's right on the black 14 period exponential moving average. MACD is attempting to improve. Stochastic's okay, 28%, but not great. And then weekly chart says the MACD is good, stochastic's not, but it's holding above the nine period moving average, the green line, very nicely. So at 184.16, uh, it needs to push into the 189 to 190 area this week to say that it's got the the gumption has got the strength to be able to go towards the all-time high, um, at least the last high of the 25th of 198.48. Uh, look at Amazon. We did Amazon. Look at Apple. Apple, of course, is getting lambasted uh, all, from everywhere. And it's up 23 cents at 179.20. 233.47 was the October high. Plummets down to 142. Spirals up to 215. Pulls back to 178. Mm, this is not very good action. And we've got Goog, Googie. Google's looking uh, a little bit. It's up 17 and 1,151, 1, but it doesn't look good on the chart. Um, it, it's got a lot of work to do to get to the 180. Well, 1187 is where it needs to get to, another 36 points. And then I'd say, hey, Google is an alphabet. It's really doing, doing well because it's going in the alphabet to a leg B. I don't know, right now it's not looking all that great. Now, the question I had earlier was, would I look at the, would I do an assessment of the TLT? Because look at the big dichotomy. Lehman iShare 20-year Treasury bond ETF is up 85 cents at 128.62. Took out the left side high. Now, this is a Chapman wave. It's, it's an instant restart, but it's what I call a flat-based instant restart because it go, did go from a peak D. Then it had a sharper pullback, didn't take out the low that made the trough D at 125.20. It went down to 125.30. So that five cents made a difference because if it went under it, I'd say the next plunge is going to take it below 125. Right now, all I can say is that 126.69, the left side look, is key support. Now, why do I say dichotomy? Because money is going into bonds. Rates are coming down. Look at the TNX. T and X dot X, that's the tenure. Look at this. Trough A, trough B, trough C, trough D, instant restart, trough A, trough B, trough C, trough another D. And a D in the weekly, an absolute plunge. So now what we're looking at is rates are at record lows. So why is money coming out of, probably coming out of stocks and going into, uh, and going into uh, the so-called safety of bonds, I'm not sure, uh, except to say 
that that international look that we were doing with copper and 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 wood, the eye shares of timber and forestry, that's just saying that there's a lot of nervousness over throughout the world. So if I'm looking at this, then the HGX, which is the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index, should be screaming to the upside. Oh, it's really strongly up. It's at 304.32. It's up 0.1. It's up 29 cents. Something's something is really weird yet so if housing money's not going into housing where's money going to tina that's what somebody said the other day. i thought that was great brilliant uh tina means uh i thought it was brilliant but now i can't remember what it means i'll tell you in a minute basil chapman take it conditions hour um down to 36 SMPs at five i'll be right back Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts has a special running for one week only. From now through Memorial Day, you can save 25% off your first month and we'll ship you a hardcover copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade. The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system. This software package is the fastest, easiest, and most accurate way to analyze stocks using Tom O'Brien's trading philosophy. It automatically provides you with Gartley and Butterfly patterns, swing points, retracement levels, confluence areas, expansion targets, and the power law vector indicator with just the click of a mouse. The scanner searches thousands of stocks each day and delivers a list of every Gartley and Butterfly pattern it finds automatically. Just enter the promo code BOOK at checkout. This sale ends Memorial Day, May 27th, so don't let it pass you by. For all the details and to save 25% and get your free book shipped today, check out the art of timing the trade charts on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So, uh, TLT trading at 128.70, up 0.92. Tina, there is no alternative. Uh, really, I mean, if you want to put money to work, what do you do? You have to put into something in the market. That's the only thing that's really moving. Or if you want complete safety, you put it in bonds, but that's a different thing altogether. But maybe in shorter term duration, whatever. And well, let me see what junk is doing. JNK, which is uh, the spider, Barclays, uh, high yield bond. Uh, oh, this used to be notated, now it's not. So why is it not notated? I don't know. Okay, just real quickly, there we go. There's your down. 
point and you can start a buy signal goes to a buy mode peak a in the weekly b and i think that's a c let me just double check no it's the one before so let me check that out you got 107.97 107.97 parallel highs 108.69 108.69 parallel highs so one of these could in fact be a d but it doesn't matter i mean a, a, a phantom c i'm calling this a c because it matches everything else we're looking at but most importantly at 107.19 up 13 cents the high yield doesn't look too great it looks very much like the y in fact if i looked at this you would have said it was a chart of one of the indices it doesn't look like the tlt look at the tlt here we go i mean look at that beautiful cup breakout pattern chapman wave a uh, cup and ladle breakout it did look like a cup and handle for a moment well, i'll call it a cup and handle for now and it's trading really well and when it finally comes down it's just got less than two points to 126.69 to test in the chapman wave's flat base restart so um hey if if one there's a dichotomy right uh not only that we've got crude oil which has come down really sharply from the 66 66.60 area back in the 23rd of april trading down to the 57 trading right now at 59.15 up 53 cents and got deflected at a peak C from the 200 period exponential moving average, not breaking down, it just looks horrible because the daily chart extended so highly. But if you look at the weekly chart, still holding pretty well. So that's also saying to me internationally, there's been a pull, some kind of a pullback in the shorter term, the, the, the high grade copper and the I, the I shares of uh, the timber industry, that's a little different. So uh, let me just do this because I had a couple of questions about XLI. XLI is the real industrials. That's the S&P Select Industrial. Even then, it's not purely industrial like the Dow was initially. But most importantly, it's up 0.04, and the Dow itself is up 0.14%, 0.4 and 0.14. Dow's up 35, 0.80, 0.97, and the, S and the XLI is up 0.03. Uh, yeah, this is just not good. Look, it went to the 200 period moving average. Let me show you. Keep your eye on the left side chart. Well, keep your eye on the left side chart for now. And I want to show you something. Look, keep your eye on the left side chart. And there's the Dow. So the Dow is also saying it's in this sideways consolidation phase. It hasn't broken down. Breakdown would be under 25,000. That'd be a real breakdown. I got a whole week to go. I'm not sure yet whether we're going to break 25,222, the low of the 14th of May. So that's the Dow. But when you look at the QQQ, you can see that it's really struggling. It's up 96 cents at 179.14 right now. So that, that's good action. But look at that weekly chart. The weekly chart is suggesting unless there's really a spectacular, some kind of a, a trigger to, to say, wow, this is a great opportunity, great buying opportunity. I don't see that yet. So the QQQ together with the XLK, which is the S&P Select, Tech Spider Fund has gone down to a trough D, trying to rally. But look at the weekly chart. If I didn't see this as a peak B, I would have said, absolutely, this is more like a G. This is more like a, some kind of a topping action than to say a consolidation. So I'm just doing one thing at a time. I'm saying to you, look, there's been a spectacular move from the December lows. It got way overextended to the upside in many of the indices. Look, XLK went to 79.70. It was at 57.57 after a 24% decline from its all-time high of 76 down to 57. Now it goes from 57, 20 points higher, was about 37%, 38%, and now it's just pulled back a little bit. So keep in mind, what we're really looking at here is the extension that went beyond what it should have in most of the indices in April or May, is now saying consolidation taking place. I'm treating it as a consolidation. I don't see any reason why not to treat it as a consolidation. But I can tell you this, under 25,000, it's not a consolidation anymore. It's starting to become much more serious. Okay, next question I had is, would I look at silver? Yep, sure, silver right now. Silver is down 0.24 at 14.31. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Look at this. Remember this channel that I drew in? I did it in a bunch of uh, different indices, sectors. Look at this. 
That's the line in the sand is the red line. And it's in an F. But in fact, I could make the case that it's an F slash D. Why? Because this rally here and failure, peak A minus, made a trough A, a trough B. Let's call it a gray trough A and a gray trough B. And then an E slash C and an F slash D. So look at this. At the bottom end of a, of a narrow channel line, remember all these different techniques over the years, I've developed these techniques. We use them all the time for subscribers to opening call. And what's really important about this particular phase right now is that the, the, the daily chart is just making absolutely under the 14 period moving average, it's making a series of lower lows and lower highs, much lower highs and much lower lows. And look, here's the weekly. It shows you the same thing. And it hasn't taken out. It hasn't come close to the four, one, the 14.17 low of the week of the 16th of November. I shouldn't say it hasn't come close. It's getting close. It's making an arch formation or inverted A formation after the PD weekly top. So this for silver is a big deal. It is a big deal. Can it pull one of these things? Because look, these guys were going down, down, down. Look at this. Look at this uh, channel right here in wheat. And when it broke out, whew. Look at that weekly chart, how it broke out. So that's very important. And um, what I am looking at here is that the, I don't care whether it's because of the administration. I don't care what it is. I don't care what the reason is. I don't care, only, I only care about the result. And the fact is that this, when there's been no real evidence of um, the farmers being helped, there's a hint that they will be, but just a hint. Look what's happened, 418 to today's high of 509 in just a few weeks. This is from the May, from the April, no, sorry, the 513. That was the, the, the low of the 13th of May. That is incredible action. So here we go. I'll just put that in so I don't forget. So that's five. That is, that, that is really something. Not five one, but 513. Yeah. Okay, so I had a question when I look at Berkshire Hathaway. Be okay, I haven't looked at it for a while. I hope I've updated it. Yep, made a peak F top at just under two. It's about 218. It makes the top back in the beginning of May, trading right now 201. Hmm, this is something to talk about. This is Buffett. Buffett can't be too happy. Has pulled back quite a bit, but it's still up in the higher range. I'll be back to talk about Berkshire Hathaway. We are Kate got beat down 73 cents at 200.97. That was a 40 S piece of right. The TFNN Memorial Day Tiger Dollar Sale is here. From now through Memorial Day, you can get up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars never expire and can be used for any TFNN good or service. Whether you're a current subscriber looking to add instant savings or you're a new listener or viewer that is considering signing up for any product in the near future, now is a great time to get your Tiger Dollars and lock in dramatic savings on all TFNN products and services. We only have a sale like this a couple times a year, so don't let it pass you by. Tiger Dollars are available in three purchase options with a 20%, 30%, and even 40% bonus. Once you purchase your Tiger Dollars, you'll be able to apply them to your TFNN account, and then they are automatically used for all your recurring subscriptions going forward, making it as easy as possible. For all the details on this Tiger Dollar promotion running through Memorial Day, visit the front page of TFNN.com and get your Tiger Dollars before this sale passes you by. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, self 
African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So Berkshire Hathaway, BRK.B, that's the A share, dot A, no, dot B is the B shares that we're looking at you. This is a that I call the Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down. It looks like an uppercase A. Hasn't taken out the lows that were made back at 198.23 and 20, 198.20 on the 25th of March. Made a peak F top in the Chapman wave back on the 3rd of May at 219.16. So it's come back very steadily in trough C. It's trying to rally, but the MACD is still very weak. Stochastic is terrible at 12%. It needs to get to 22% or more to really get the, over the uh, 205, mm, call it 204, uh, 14 and 200 period exponential moving averages. Weekly chart is suggesting that it made a cup failure pattern and to take a little more time to consolidate. So um, it really needs to get to 206. Another six or seven points higher. At that stage, I'll be saying, you know what? You can make a, a cup formation. You could run it a little further, but I suspect it's going to be a failure mode until it makes it a decisive low. And I suspect that's going to be more in the 197 area, 195. I'm not sure about that, but that's kind of what my eye says at this particular point. Next question I had is Twitter. Uh, can you look at Twitter daily, weekly, monthly? Yep, sure. Uh, daily. So, I looked at this for the last two weeks or so. It was recommended that I have a look at it. It's, act, it's been acting very well. I agreed. But, you know, I was looking at Twitter way back, and I figured if, if the president is using Twitter the way he's using Twitter, at some point Twitter should be recognized and it should be very good. But it had its big run to 47 back in June of last year. Then it pulled back to the 26s. And now it's trading, it ha after having hit the other day, 41, just on, on 41, trading 37.61. So my concern here is that <clears throat> it's really struggling. And this is the way I would look at it. Put it on your list as a stock that has the potential in the monthly chart to get to the 47, 200 period exponential moving average to possibly double top. But at the same time, this is what I'm looking at. I think it's going to digest the recent gains, especially the big gap that it had. That was on the 22nd of April. It's trading at 33.82. I think it must have been good earnings or something. Gaps up. Lows 36.91 the next day. And then by the 30th, it runs to 40.92. And now it's just digesting the gains. Treat it as a stock to put on your list. <clears throat> I'm not sure I'd rush into it. The best way to do it, <clears throat> excuse me, let me just have a cup of tea. <clears throat> the best way to do this is if you really do like the stock. I do like the stock, but having made a peak D in the weekly, I think there's more time 
I wouldn't be surprised if it has to test the 36 to 35 area a little bit. <clears throat> this is the way I would either I would buy an August, go right out, go far out, an August call, and I'd be closer to being in the money so that uh, you lose a big percentage on the way down, but nothing like if you were just crazy out the money at 42 and you're paying uh, $1.80 and the thing goes down to 25 cents. No, I'm saying it's a 37.59. I'd buy something like a 35 if you can, so you're paying already two and a half. So there must be more than a dollar premium if you're going out to August. So let's say you're paying three and a half. You're paying up 10%. My suspicion is that at some point you really get a good chance to either get your money back, but even a good chance to do a double by August. So that's the, the longer term. Shorter term to intermediate, I'm thinking that it's really choppy and it's going to mess around here for a while. I'm absolutely wrong if it, if it closes above 39.50 in the next week. But if it starts to break the low that was made on the 13th of 36.37, I'd suggest hold off. Give yourself time. Put it on your list, and this is the way I would do it. If it pulls back under 36, I would have my first tranche, my little bit. I'd start there <clears throat> saying there's about a 10% risk. But if it starts to move higher, it could do it very quickly. If it gets rid of all, if it fills some of the gap and then goes back into the 36, 37 area, that'll be good action. So I'm just saying I would hold off. I'm putting it on my list. I've got it on my list, in fact, for my subscribers, just there to, to, as a watchdog. We've missed the, the really nice move. I did like it after that peak D and it was holding 200 period moving average at 32. Never did a thing about it. That's a shame because now you would have had a cushion and you would have just said, okay, I can give up some of the gains, can even take a little bit off and have held it. That's not the case. I'm not in it, but I am saying keep it on your list. I think it is going to be, a, I think it's, the monthly chart says it has the potential to push to the 50s, but you've got to have a lot of patience. So if you're looking at a 13 to 14, 15 point rally, so that's about a 45% gain, then you can have yourself a 10% or a 12% risk. So if you like it now and you don't want to risk it suddenly gapping up and not knowing what to do or pushing above the high of the 22nd, about 39.32, <clears throat> I'd say maybe just start a little nibble here. You can add or subtract it, anything you want, but at least it gives you a, a sense. I'm, I've got the arch formation. I think it's going to be coming back and it's going to be doing a test of the 36s over the next couple of days. We'll see. But in the meantime, that's my assessment. I just risk reward. I don't. I don't want to be buying it here at 37 and see it suddenly break 35.50 as support. Now I've got a two-point loss, and I and it's not my plan. My plan here is that I would I would want to see a pullback. How it holds between 36 and 35, is it going to fill the entire gap? Is it going to break and go back to um, 34.62 or lower? <clears throat> we don't know. But in this particular environment, I'd say just be a little careful um, on the stock. Okay. Next thing we're looking at here is. Uh, what was the question? Uh, Rockport Music, nope. Uh, oh, yeah, we go. A question about uh, Boeing. Boeing is up nicely. It's up four points today, 359. And it's helping the Dow. I think that's part of the reason why the Dow is up 30-something points instead of 36 instead of being down 36. But this is just... Be careful of Boeing. There's a lot more bad news that's going to come out. Yes, I know I like to say that you should be looking at the chart, but the chart, the weekly chart is saying not quite done yet, not quite done. doesn't have to break down, doesn't have to go down to 320, although my suspicion is that 327 is going to be an area that it hits at some point. But at this stage, at 358, can it go down another 10%? Absolutely. Can it go up another 10%? I think that's going to be harder. There's some bad news, and I think it's going to be bad news that's going to be country-specific, that some of the countries are going to say, you know, what? we're now thinking we've got Airbus, we've got other things, and we've got a huge backlog. We can wait. We'll come back in. Waiting 10 years or waiting 12 years doesn't make too much difference, especially in this market. So um, I think Boeing has limited upside. 
question I had about LMT. LMT, that's uh, Lockheed Martin, right? Yeah, Lockheed Martin. I haven't finished it. D went to a peak. E, this has really been a very good uh, rally. It's in a leg D in the weekly and a peak D in the daily. Oh, that is interesting. All right. I'll do a little more work. We'll talk about it when I get back. Basil Chapman, final segment coming up. Oh, don't forget my web, my uh, talk tomorrow night at MIT. This is for the Boston Investors Group. I'll talk about it when we get back. At uh, 7 o'clock in Cambridge, Mass., at MIT, real easy to get to, good parking. I'll talk about it as soon as we return. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfn.com. Jobs, where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. So, um, yes, I'll be uh, speaking at uh, MIT uh, tomorrow night. It's an MIT event. The, the, the room is at MIT. It's the Boston Investors Group meeting, Wednesday, May the 29th, 2019, 7 o'clock. Uh, MIT building E51, room 335, 70 Memorial Drive, Cambridge, Mass. It's, it's actually uh, parallel to uh, Memorial Drive. So you take a left and then you can park. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, you can just go to the, go, you know, you can Google it, uh, Boston Investors Group Meetup. And I'll be talking about uh, socioeconomic or political trends, different charts, different indices, uh, what looks good over the coming uh, few months. Uh, what's working right now, uh, what is um, t still taking a breather, a long-term breather, at least has been for six or seven months, uh, what are stocks under the radar, and the esoterics like skyscrapers, etc. and I'll be taking questions. Really looking forward to it. I always have a fabulous time there. Really good questions. A lot of people are fundamental analysts, uh, but there are many that are technical, and I get these questions that I have to, on the spot, I have to think it through. 
in a, in, a, in a way that perhaps I hadn't thought of it before. So it's always quite exciting for me. I love it. Okay. Next thing we're looking at here is a question about CGC. CGC is canopy. This is for Vicky Bradenton. Uh, couldn't hold on the line. <clears throat> I, right now at 45.59, if if you're used to this stock, which is canopy growth, medical marijuana trading at 46.59, upper dollar 17, take a little bit, of, take a little bite right now at um, 45.59. <clears throat> Reason is the MACD is trying to turn up. It's testing the 14 period exponential moving average. Stochastic's okay, 31%. <clears throat> I don't like these arch formations in the weekly, but this is at least going to give you for, I'd say, for an 80 cent stop, just a le maybe less than 2%. If this thing takes out in the next two days, if it takes out the high of the 22nd, 46.97, that'll start leg B. That'll be very positive, and we'll target the 48th. <clears throat> It's a risk reward, good opportunity. Don't forget, folks, this is the end of the uh, Tiger Dollar Day. <clears throat> Go to the front page of TFNN. Check it out for a savings of 20, 30, 40 percent. Stay tuned for Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back with Tom later on today. And check out my opening call. I hope that uh, it's something of benefit to you. Done very nicely lately. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow.